Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. We are here, it is Thursday, and we are continuing on with this team that we kicked off with a week or so ago on the channel. If you've missed any of the games so far and would like to go back and check out the progress with this team and where we've kind of ended up with coming in today's episode, click up here, put a card in for you, you can go check those episodes out, come back into the day and you'll understand the route that we've taken to get where we are. We are aiming for 1800 by the end of the week. I still believe we can do it. We a bit of a hiccup to kick us off in our last episode yesterday but i feel like we can still do this by friday's episode so we've got today we've got friday we might need to squeeze at least one more game in than we do normally but we'll see what we can do just to recap the team for you guys at home we've got the Minetric, it is the mega of the team we didn't feature yesterday so hopefully we can bring that today we've got the lunala there it's got the z move primal kyoga tapu lele gonna be scarfed tapu uh, kartana with the psychic seed and focus sash hydragon all of the members of the team have been doing a lot of work over the last couple of weeks, so it's really nice to see the interaction between all of the Pokemon, and we can kind of slot them into each other as well. They're all interchangeable, or it feels like that. Obviously, it's matchup dependent, but the team, as always, is down in the description. There is a Roll Paste and a Poker Paste. Check it out, try it out if you do, and as always, if you do try it out, let me know what your thoughts are of the team. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode. Hopefully, it doesn't take too long to find an opponent. We'll hop over to this screen so we can have a, a gander at our rating. Um, uh, 1747, so we've got a little way to go, haven't we? Um, music to kick us off today. Should we go Battle Royale? Because I never picked this music, but it's a kind of fun one, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, yeah, we had two decent games yesterday. I think one of them obviously was one that... We just, just lacked any sort of answer for in that gravity hypnosis team with the the lele the drift blim that was extremely difficult for us to kind of overcome and like i said in that episode we needed a lot of luck um to kind of get around that and it would have been a one-turn wake up get a tailwind up um but i think at the end of the day it was just showing that we've got a big a big hole in the team that were weak against that sort of thing so taking steps forward with the team we can look at that to kind of overcome it but i did say in yesterday's episode what do you guys think about doing and making changes to the team to make it a little bit better when we come up against those things in future? So I will definitely check those out if I haven't done already. And uh, as I keep saying as well, guys, I'm so sorry that I'm not able to get back to you as soon as I would like to in comments in respect to that. It's just with Thea starting a new job. It's like 10 hour days as well, which is crazy. So fitting in the, the channel around it is a little bit difficult at the minute, but like I said in yesterday's episode, I feel like two weeks time, I'll find my feet. We're gonna have brand new content onto the channel. We're gonna have more content, Sword and Shield hype, all sorts of things. So it's gonna be really exciting. Can't find an opponent again. So we'll be we'll be post haste with this. And um, and um, I, I'm trying my best. You know, one of the things I was, uh, I did this like induction day at work at my new job. And one of the the, 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 the talkers at this uh, induction day was so bad talking like to this whole room, this uh, conference room. And all he kept doing, every other word was M, M, and M. And I thought, I probably do that. And it really is annoying. So one of the things that I would like to try and do is stop saying M. But I do find myself saying it over and over again. I'm gonna go. We're gonna try and like consciously now. I feel like okay. I'm I'm just gonna say it all the time now, and it's really gonna great. But I've highlighted it. It's something we'll work on. The delivery of the episodes will be a lot better if I don't do it, of course. Um, <laughs> but what we'll do now, guys, is it's gonna take a little bit longer to find an opponent than I would have liked. So we'll cut to when we find our first opponent of the episode. So we'll be right back. And we've got a first opponent of the episode. It is Mercia from Japan, I think. 1527 rated player. We So we'll get straight into team preview, I guess. I feel like I'm all over the place today in this episode, but all the same, we're going to be fine. I hope this is not more gravity hypnosis. It's a bit of deja vu going into this one. But our first opponent today, running a team of Tapu Lele, Incineroar, Crobat, Groudon, Mewtwo, and Bronzong. So we've got two forms of speed control, definitely sticking out like a sore thumb. We've got the Crobat with the Tailwind, and then we've got the Bronzong with the Trick Room. We've got the Psychic combination of Tapu Lele, and what will be probably Mega Mewtwo Y, 
Uh, there's going to be Gravity Hypnosis potentially in this team as well with Scarf Tabulele with that Gravity and then the Crobat with the Hypnosis. One of the things we can do to get around that is obviously the Minetric and the Tabulele which both um, do outspeed the Crobat. So we can go down that route. I think it might be a bit better. It's a bit easier than dealing with the... Um, the Drift Blim from yesterday, we definitely need Kyogre of our own because of the Groudon in this matchup. Weather control is very important. And do we go Lunala as our last one? Lunala can be very good. The only thing about leading like we are is it leaves us a little bit vulnerable to a potential uh, Bronzong lead from my opponent. But I'm going to lock in anyway. The other thing is that Hydreigon could be quite good here. We haven't bought it. We'll have to manage without the three-headed dragon. But I think we should be okay. We'll see anyway. Bronzong is the one thing that I don't want to see my opponent leading with. I can't really see them leading with it, seeing as Lunala would be a real kind of option for us to lead with. And it's something that players do tend to lead with. So you kind of want to maybe keep the, the Bronzong in the back for later game to set that trick room up if your Tailwind doesn't, doesn't come to fruition. We are going to see... Mewtwo and Crobat come in for my opponent. Now, if this is Mega Mewtwo, why will it be able to outspeed Ammonetric, which isn't ideal? Um, ah, which makes things a little bit more tricky for us, for sure, because we are we are prone to um, probably going down to a side strike, which is a little bit. It's not ideal. It's not ideal at all. We can psychic the Crobat, but I don't think we're going to be able to. I just don't see us taking a side strike from the Meteor with Monetric. There's no way we do. I really just don't see it. Uh, oh, we can Mega Evolve. We can Moonblast into the, the Mewtwo, but the Crobat's the one thing that I really want to try and get rid of. Um, I'm going to Snarl, and I'm going to Psychic into the Crobat if I can, and hopefully we've locked in in time. We're running out of time as well. This is the problem here. I'm gonna kind of hoping that the Mewtwo attacks into the Lele here. If we can get a Snarl onto the, the Mewtwo Y, it does help us out quite a lot. But I don't know if we're going to be able to um, to take an attack here. We could have protected, but it doesn't really help us out when the Tailwind's going to be set up. I'd imagine the Crobat's probably sashed as well. These opposing Psychic teams are pretty awkward for us to deal with. Ugh. And we time out with <laughs> Lele, it's like the worst. Oh, we actually see. Okay, this works out a little bit better for us because <laughs> it does try to use gravity. Okay, luck of the draw. Wow. Oh, it hits anyway. Come on. <laughs> oh, really, 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 really. <sighs> This sucks. I hate hypnosis. Well, at least we can taunt the Crobat, but I mean, at the same time... <sighs> hmm. Do we keep Manetric on the field? And bring in Lunala? For Lele, I think it's maybe a better option. It just if I bring Manetric out... Lunala Rain, I feel like we're going to take an attack in that slot. And I don't really want our Shadow Shield getting broken. I can see... Yeah, there's a side Strike. Where's it going to be into? Oh, wow, it's into Lele. Okay. Okay, we stay asleep. There's a Tailwind getting set up now. Super fine. Okay. That's fine. That is fine. Um... I think we Volt Switch out onto the Crobat this time around, and do we try, I don't think we try and get a Tailwind up because, although the Mewtwo is, I'm going to bring Tapu Lele back in. I still think even minus one Mewtwo, Shadow Ball be enough to get Lunala when it's Shadow Shield's bust. But Lele should be able to take, yeah, there's the Shadow Ball. Hopefully Minetric can wake up and we can get a Volt Switch into that Crobat and pick up the knockout. No, of course not. 
Okay, hypnosis does avoid the, the, the gravity. Okay, so. Let's Volt Switch onto the Crobat again. I mean, we could Psychic this time into the Crobat and just get rid of it and just go for another Snarl. That might be an idea to do as well. Um, uh, I think probably we would be better doing that. Unless the Crobat's got the Psychic Resist Berry, which would not be ideal. But we should be able to get rid of the Crobat, which gets rid of the Hypnosis Spam. Gravity Mewtwo. So many different options with this Gravity Spam. Mewtwo gonna switch out. Okay. Oh, is the Groudon come in? It's not what we want to see. Tailwind set up, I think, now. Hmm. Unless it is special Groudon, I guess. I mean, we should be able to deny the Tailwind. That's the, the big thing here. Oh, the Crobat going to switch out as well. Bronzong going to hit the field. Yeah. Bronzong. So my opponent going down this route. And we really, really, really need... Oh, we're not even waking up with Manetric. This is like a nightmare. A nightmare, I tell you. Um. Okay, well, Volt switch out onto the Bronzong. Do we skill swap the Groudon? Because we, we could prevent my opponent from being able to kind of skill swap around. It's just Tapu Lele could be so valuable later in this game. We know that Minetric's going to wake up. We know we'll be able to get Kyogre in. Uh, we could, uh, I think we switch out and we bring Lunala onto the field. Hopefully the Groudon protects, but I doubt it does. I think it just throws out Precipice Blades here. Yep. Three turns sleep as well. Well, we're going to see a Trick Room set up for sure. This could be kind... This could be... <sighs> I don't know. This could go in our favour. It might not as well. The problem is, though, that we've got is this skill swap with this bronze on, potentially with the ground on to get weather control. We've got wide guard, which does really help us. Precipice blades, Kyogre avoids, which is nice. Ninola, uh, it's not so bad. Um, Now we could potentially scout out to see if they've got skill swap. Just ice beam, get some damage into this Groudon. Oh my god. And if we can get, oh, we're not, uh, let's see. Skill swap, I would imagine, yeah. Hopefully they're just precipice blades. That's all we can kind of hope for. And I think the next turn we can get away with, yeah, probably switching in Minetric for Lunala. Because I imagine a Fire Punch coming out there. I don't imagine you go for the Precipice Blades until... Hmm. Yeah, I think if we go for another Ice Beam, bring in Minetric. In the hope that the Groudon Fire Punch is the Lunala. To get rid of the... To get rid of the wide god. The intimidate gonna be really useful for us here, regardless if we see a precipice blades or not. Jarable. Yep. Ah, it just goes for it, yeah, thinking that you probably get the kill. Which you probably do onto the Manetric now. Yeah, but it does allow us to get Lunala back onto the field, so we've got that wide guard again. Two more ice beams, and we were able to do it. Hmm. Ah, it's just. Hmm. I'm gonna have to just continually go for it. Do I go for an attack here into the Bronzong, hoping that we see? 
Or did they just go for the same the same kind of tactic as last time and go for the precipice blades gyro ball? I'd imagine they probably just do that. They might go gyro ball fire punch. Hypnosis. Ugh. Fire punch. Fire punch, yeah. This is where not having protect on Alola kind of hurts us a little bit. Hmm. Again, it's these like hypnosis gravity teams. We've got nothing for them. And to get to this 1800 mark that we wanted to do, it's so difficult. It's so difficult when this is what you can, you've got really very few answers to, to deal with this sort of sleep spam, as, the, as I would call it. So I think we're going to have to. I'm not really comfortable locking into. To psychic with Tapu Lele. Hmm. I mean, one of the things we could do is go for. This is a trick room end now. Yeah, it does. We could. I mean, if, if Lele can stick around this turn, we could try skill swap by Kyogre. I just don't see it happening now. And even if we do that. Yeah, there's no, no chance. And we've just, yeah, lost. Such a sad day. Mm hmm. We do wake up, but just not enough, I don't think. You've got to. Really, Hydreigon would have been the thing to bring here. This is where Hydreigon would have really shone um, against. I mean, we're still susceptible to the, the hypnosis from the Bronzong, which isn't ideal. If the trick room does go up in this situation like it has done and we can get rid of the the ground on but the bronze on hypnosis is again mewtwo comes in yeah and i mean hypnosis has crazy accuracy i will just say that like my opponent doesn't even need the gravity you just don't run gravity there's a point for everyone Gravity hypnosis teams don't even need gravity. You just go for it. And there's the Mewtwo comes in. And we will gracefully take another loss to this sort of team. It's crazy that the last two days, this is the sort of thing that we keep coming up against. Our rating is going to take a chunk for this one now because Mercier is not very highly rated. So we're going to take a big chunk of points away from our tally at the minute. Taking away probably... Our ability to reach 1800 with the team, which is a little bit sad, but I think just really highlighting areas of the team that we're kind of struggling against. The definite matchups that we're struggling against. The psychic spam. Oh, difficult, difficult, difficult. Anyway, good game to my opponent. It's a bit, it's a bit, it's, it's really difficult when you kind of know that you like one matchup gets highlighted and not very. I would say not one of the more common matchups in the form. Like the, the the gravity hypnosis isn't really something I would say is that common in the ultra series. And then to get like pretty much three on the bounce where we come up against them, it makes it very difficult to kind of come to terms with. Our rating hasn't taken that much of a chunk, and I guess seventeen twenty two. We lost about twenty five points. Yeah, so we'll try. We're getting too caught up with our rating, though, our numbers. We've got to concentrate on the games. Hopefully, we don't find and bump into another another um, hypnosis gravity team. But we've got our next opponent, so we'll soon find out. It doesn't look like it. It looks very interesting, though, so we'll get straight into team preview. So we've got a team of Duskman and Crosma. It's a pyro. Yeah, I think it is. It uh, requires uh, something that you never see. It's a normal fire type pretty sure. Rayquaza, Gengar, Tapu Fini and Scrafty and I do apologise in VGC you never really see Pyro I think we saw it briefly in 2014 well not briefly it did some work there I think that format yeah pretty sure but since then it really hasn't featured or made much of a splash but quite an interesting team we've got the Scrafty there it's going to act like a bit of a um, Incinero with the Intimidate support, Fake Ad support, it's dark typing as well. Just a lot slower, performs well under Trick Room, which you can imagine this team's probably going to go for. And maybe that isn't Ultra Necrozma, and maybe it is just actually Dusk Main to, 
do the Trick Room stuff. You're going to probably see Mega Gengar there alongside the Mega Rayquaza, but maybe not Mega Gengar. Maybe it's got an odd item on it as well. But what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I think Lunala is very, very good here. Tapu Lele as well is good to kind of check Gengar at least if we do see that come out. Um, probably Manetric with its... Yeah, Manetric is going to be good. And um, I kind of want... I want Hydreigon, but I just feel like Kyogre is going to be better off. So we'll see. It's a weird team, but it's highly rated, so let's see what my opponent does to, to come at us with today. But seeing stuff like Pyro, I mean, that just kind of encapsulates the whole Ultra series, doesn't it? There, there's so many viable Pokemon, and that's why I think it's a really good time for us to do the this Road to Rank Roulette series, because I feel like there's so many unexplored Pokemon. Pokemon that I would probably never even look at, so if you nominate and it comes up in the wheel, it's great, because we can take that forward into the next we can see. Scratch our heads a bit and think, whoa, what can we do with this Pokemon? Right, we've got the Duskman across my and the Gengar. Hmm. Is it Sash Gengar? Is it Sash Gengar? I don't know. I'm definitely going to launch a Z move into this Necrozma because potentially we should pick up a KO. Well, we could taunt Necrozma. The problem would be here is if we see like Sash Gengar. Sash Gengar, go for Trick Room, and the Duskman just protect. I'm going to go for it anyway. The Duskman doesn't really threaten Lunala too much. Okay, we're going to see it switch out and see Pyro come in. Ah, uh, it's immune. It's immune to. <laughs> it's immune to our attacks. This is why the normal typing is really good. It's actually Scarf Gengar. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Scarf Gengar. Oh, things go from bad to worse. Right, well. It's not the end of the world. Um, we don't need to cut a Z-move here, so that's a good thing. Right. Can we bring Kyogre in? Yeah, I guess we can. We can probably set up a Tailwind, and then we can start just throwing out some Water Spouts, which should do the job against this sort of team, I would imagine. I don't know what the Pyro is going to be doing now. I'm sure that's the female version because you've got the male and the female variations. And this is the female one. Pretty sure. Uh, but I really, I'm not really too sure what Pyro is going to be doing here. It's obviously a very good switch in for any ghost type attacks. We'll go for the Tailwind. We will protect Kyogre this turn. Obviously there's the, the Rayquaza in the back which is definitely going to be the Mega of the team I think. Whether or not we see it switch in right now is another thing, but we will see another sludge bomb. What's going to be into our? Oh, I don't say the pyro's got like crunch. What's oh, got taunt? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? We're getting like absolutely demolished by Gengar. Oh, Gengar pyro. Right. We can't tailwind. Um, we can side shock the Gengar for sure, and let's just water spout. It's just water spout. Water spout. Let's see what it's this thing's doing. Man, Scarf Gengar. Really didn't see that coming. I really didn't. Obviously, as you can possibly tell, it's ripping us apart. It's the magic of best of the best of one format. I do like it though. I mean, you can't not like it. Things are pretty tough for us right now, but. Oh, it's now great. Great, great, great. Water spouts should still get the pyro, and a side shock should still get the Gengar. The problem is dealing with the Rayquaza when it comes in, because it's. I would imagine. Side shock disabled. Excellent. I'd imagine the, uh, the Rayquaza in this. Bit, kind of build would be banded just to get the maximum the maximum effect from Mega Rayquaza so we do clear the Gengar and the Pyro oh, what are we going to see is it going to be the Rayquaza yeah there we are big boy Ray coming in spoiling the party alongside Duskmane hmm 
I really want, I need to get Manetric onto the field to get an Intimidate off, but it's going to be kind of tricky. Getting Lunala, uh, yeah, we'll do that. We can protect Kyogre for a turn at least. We'll see if we can get, if we can get Manetric in, in a decent position to get at least an Intimidate off. We might be able to come back in this one. I don't know, though. It feels a little bit too far gone now for us to do very much. Scarfed Gengar, Pyro, Taunt, Snarl. I mean, it works. It works. It does the job. This is what we've got to look forward to in our, our roulette series, for sure. The, these sort of things. Because you can get away with it 100% in the best of one situation. We are going to actually see Ultra Necrozma. Wow. I didn't expect that. Of all things. Okay, so we'll protect Kyogre. What are we going to see my opponent do? Photon Geyser. It's into the Kyogre. And Dragon Ascent into Minetric. Okay. Come on, Minetric. Take this. I know you're not very strong, but... So powerful. So powerful. It's Life Orb. Alright. Well. What are we going to worry about? Eerie Impulse into the Necrozma. Um, yeah, let's do that. Eerie Impulse into the Necrozma and Ice Beam into the Rayquaza. Because I think after an Intimidate, we should take a Dragon Ascent from the Ray. Hopefully we don't see the double in. Eerie Impulse, I'll put that Necrozma into a position where it's not really going to be doing very much. If we can get the Rayquaza after another Dragon Ascent, minus two... Uh, we should be able to get it from that range, I'm hoping. It's just whether or not our Intimidate is enough to take the Dragon Ascent. And I'm kind of confident that we probably are able to take a Dragon Ascent from the Ray. And I've just got to hope that you go for the Rick, the Kyogre in, in this in this situation. Hopefully you do. Eerie Impulse. So I'll put this Necrozma down to minus two. This is a physical variant. Could be. That wouldn't be good. It is physical. It is physical. Oh, we're knackered. We're knackered. We should have all switched. Ah, oh, yeah. When there's no way we take a dragon ascent here. The crit didn't really matter. I don't think. Yeah, and that's that's it. There's no way Lunala can come it back in this game. Oh, what a disappointing episode. What a disappointing episode. We've had two really bad losses here today. Um. It's not something I'm gonna get like super upset about. It's just, it's difficult approaching these sort of teams where they completely catch you off guard. But I think at the end of the day, you've got to kind of look at it like, okay, well, we can't just assume all the time that everything is gonna be super standard as you kind of expect it to be. It's gonna be sometimes, and this is where you get caught out, you kind of, expect things to be a certain build, a certain variation, and they're not, and it completely catch you off guard, and by the time you kind of try and get caught up with things in the match, you've lost too much resource on your side of the field, and there's no way for you to come back. So the longest Z-move animation is underway, and it is into Lunala Critical. Does a decent amount of damage, and enough for Ray to pick up the pieces, I think, right here with this Dragon Ascent, and it will be able to uh, close this one up for my opponent, and that's the first time we've had two losses, I think, in a long time. Uh, yeah. Difficult to take, difficult to swallow. Definitely areas of the team that we've just... Yeah, we've got, obviously, the weaknesses to the sleep spam, which we've had for the the latter part of this week. And then, I think this team here is just crazy. The Pyro, the, the Scarf Gengar, and then the, the, the Restricted Combination. Just assuming that the, the Necrozma was going to be special-based as well, and kind of get caught out with a physical variant. Not very, not very helpful there, but... Very good game to my opponent. And guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Regardless of the results, I hope it's been entertaining. And again, it's just stuff that we can take on board for changing the team, improving it for future variations. And this is probably a team that I'll probably tweak after this week with everything that we've taken into consideration from these matches and bring onto a stream when we start streaming again. So keep an eye out for those when we do start doing those streams, which will be very soon. 
I promise, I promise. But we've got one more episode left with this team before we wrap things up tomorrow. Remember, get your suggestions in for what you would like to see played next week. And then we'll be going into the roulette stuff, which will be a lot of fun. But thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day. Whatever you end up doing, make sure you take care of yourselves. And I'll see you all for the next one. So until then, take care and bye-bye.